Asano Yama is back fighting bouts, reports the Daily Sports tabloid. He resumed them on Tuesday, we understand, and fought 16 more today against lower-tier colleagues, but started to pant after 7 or 8. I appreciate the stamina issues and the early burst of summer heat isn't helping with those, he said. But I just have to work my way back to full fitness. As for my body overall, I'm taking care doing certain things, but I don't feel so afraid anymore. I feel I moved around better today than yesterday, in fact. The knee actually feels okay, but the question is, how does it hold up when I go to other stables? For now, Asa seems to be able to go for a fast outside left before inside right, his signature fighting style. But he won't set win targets for July. Given I've not completed four of the past six tournaments, I just want to get through the full 15, he says of the upcoming meet. And if I win a few bouts early on, I can get to fight the best guys again. Terunor Fuji has also provided an update on his fitness. After working out with dumbbells on Wednesday, he told Horchi Sports, The pain in my hips is gradually easing. I'm on the mend, but still taking things day by day. March champion Takeru Fuji, meanwhile, said after the very same session, I'm not the kind of guy to dwell on injuries. I just want to get the most out of every day doing what I currently can. I am training with intent to compete next month. He hopes to restart practice bouts once his stable heads down to an end of June camp in Osaka next week. Elsewhere, Kirishima has confirmed he did fight Oshoma in practice last week and also fought Tokihayate, another key man in his stable group. He returned to light training today, working on pushing strength with just retired Yuki and lending his chest to a sixth tier colleague. I no longer feel neck pain when I collide, so I think that's getting better he told Spornichi today. I've been diving into practice bouts to recover my sumo sense, which has all but disappeared. The injury has had plenty of time to heal by now, so I've got to start upping the pace, he added. Although I need just 10 wins to reclaim the Ozeki rank, I've got to be aiming higher than that, the title, basically. But it would be nice to get back up as soon as I possibly can. Off the dohyo, coach Musashigawa has revealed his own son wants to turn pro, but clearly in several years' time, as he's still only nine years old. His dream is to follow in my footsteps, which makes me both happy and nervous, the ex Musashimaru said. He also posted about his regret that his own father died before he made Yokozuna, and before he could see his son wrestle live in Japan. Now, the former version of his stable has been showered in praise by Sankei Sports. The Musashigawa stable of the 1990s was the first to integrate weight training into its regime, writes Tadashi Imamura. They kitted out their basement with all the right equipment, and even invited a specialist strength coach. That period, of course, saw the rise of Sumo's most powerful block, Musashi Maru, Dejima, Musoyama, and Miyabiyama. This opinion piece is all part of the rush to extol Coach Nakamura's novel regime, which started in earnest this week. Behold, the era of diversity in pro sumo training, is Imamura's excited shout, though this hardly began with Nakamura. Several members of the pro coaching ranks have been through the uni system and introduced things they found useful there. There's not a complete segregation of old sumo methods and new. Perhaps arguing against Nakamura's approach is the former Kotoshogiku, soon to found his own stable, of course. 
Writing in Tokyo Sports, he stressed the importance of core sumo training in tackling preventable injuries. Sumo wrestlers build their bodies upon foot stamps, leg slides and pole slaps, coach Hidenoyama insists. That's what the ex Hakuho did, over and over again, till he was drenched all over in sweat, to build up the flexibility needed to lower the risk of injury. Abandon that in favor of a focus on weight training, and your muscles will overly tighten, increasing the injury risk. Core sumo movements are best for helping you grasp your true condition. That's why in my active days, no matter how hurt I was, I'd try to do a few foot stamps on the practice door here to ascertain how much I needed to loosen my muscles. I'm finding now, as a coach, that younger wrestlers tend to have balance problems. They can lift something heavy on two legs, but get them to balance on just the one, and they soon start to totter. There's something not right with their core axis, which I feel can be corrected by extra foot stamping. Finally, journalist Nobuya Okamura has devoted his Sankei Sports column to filling in the details behind Enho's dramatic turn as bow twirler three weeks ago. Apparently, they could not find a bow for him to practice with at first, meaning Enho could only work with one on the day before the event. It's assumed his new stablemate, Satono Fuji, showed him what to do. After soaking up the cheers of support, Enho said, That's a strong reminder that I can't give up sumo just yet. It would be nice to fight in front of that many fans one more time. I feel extra motivated to return. Please look forward to my eventual comeback. There's a fair chance he will return in the upcoming July meet, though he hasn't confirmed that just yet. And Okamura has called for the rules on tournament bow twirling to be relaxed, so that any popular wrestler can be free to have a go.